Now, in the previous few lectures, we understand how to work with front end. Now, let's take a look at how to work with back end server. In the front end, we understand how to create this home page. Then we understand how to create login page. And we also understand how to create register page. Now, the time is to create the back end API. I'm going to create a simple API and use that API to create this login system. So I'm going to back to my project and here I'm going to first create a new folder inside this MERN app. So here I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to name it server. Inside this server folder, I'm going to create my backend server. So let me close all these unwanted files right from here. And I'm going to open the server folder and inside it, I'm going to create my server file. So let me create a new file here and I'm going to name this file server.js. This file is going to initialize and start the development server. I'm using Express Framework to create the backend of this website. So let me first install my Express inside this application. I'm going to open my terminal. Let me open a new terminal here. Enter into my Moon app. And here I'm going to say npm i for install. And then I'm going to install the Express Framework. And I'm going to install this framework in the dev dependency. So I'm going to specify here hyphen d. When I press enter, this will install this Express module inside development dependency of this project. So once I have this Express, you can notice inside my package.json file, I'm going to have the development dependencies and inside that I have my Express framework. Just out of that, I'm going to open the server.js and here I'm going to first initialize this server as Express application. So I'm going to first create an instance of Express. So I'm going to see here constant Express is equal to and then I'm going to require a module called express. Just out of that, I'm going to say here constant app is equal to, and then I'm going to create an instance of the express application. So I'm going to say here express. So this will just simply create the express instance. Just out of that, just down here, I'm going to say app.use, and inside that, I'm going to say express dot json this statement is going to pass the data of the post request in the body of the request just out of that i'm going to say app dot listen and then i'm going to specify here port name which is going to be 4000 now as you know my react application is running on port 3000 so i'm going to specify here port 4000 to this backend server just out of that i'm going to specify here comma and pass a callback function and then inside it, I'm going to say console.log and in the backtick operator, I'm going to say server is running on. Then I'm going to specify HTTP colon double forward slash localhost colon. And then I'm going to specify my port name, which is 4000. Right now, I don't have any route to this development server. So let me create that first. So at the top, I'm going to say app.get. And inside it, I'm going to first specify the root route. And then as a callback function, I'm going to specify request and response parameter. And then I'm going to call here a callback function. Inside that, oops, I need to specify here comma. Just out of that. Inside this callback function, here I'm going to say response.send. And in the double quote, I'm going to specify server request. Let me save this file. Now, just out of that, let me just start this backend server. So I'm going to open the package.json file. And here you can notice I have different commands to execute a React application. Just down here, I'm going to add this server command. So I'm going to say here server. And here in the double code, I'm going to simply specify node, then specify server folder. And inside that, I have server.js file. Let me open the terminal. And here I'm going to say npm run. And then I'm going to specify this server command like this. When I press enter, this will just start my development server. You can notice my development server is running on HTTP localhost 4000. Now we successfully started the development server. Now, just for that, what I want, whenever I make any changes inside this server.js file, I want to restart my development server. So to do that, I'm going to just install nodemon module inside this project. So let me first stop the development server. And here I'm going to say npm iPhone install, specify nodemon and install it as dev dependency. This module is going to start the development server whenever we make any changes inside it. So once you have this module, 
just back to the package.json and instead of node, you need to specify here node mod. Save this file and start your development server. So I'm going to say here npm run server. You can notice, you can notice your server is running on localhost 4000. Now whenever I save this file, node mod is going to recompile this server.js file. So I don't need to restart my server whenever I make any changes inside it. Now let me just make a request on this route. So I'm going to open my Postman testing tool to test this request. So I'm going to open my Postman and open a new tab. And inside it, right here, you can notice I have the get request. And inside that, I'm going to make a request on localhost 4000. So I'm going to copy this, paste it here. Just out of that, I'm going to click on this send button. This will just make a get request on localhost 4000. And as you can see, I'm going to have response server request. Just out of that, instead of specifying this hard-coded port value to this listen, I'm going to just create a variable for this. So at the top, I'm going to create a variable called constant port. So here I'm going to specify 4000. Just out of that, I'm going to get rid of this 4000 from here and specify here port. Now just out of that, what I want, I want to store this port inside a .env file. So I'm going to create a .env file inside this project and store this port variable. I'm not going to use the .env file just for the port name. Instead, we're going to use that to store the MongoDB URI. Now, because I'm not going to share my MongoDB URI with everyone, that is why I'm going to create a .env file and store my MongoDB URI there. .env files allows you to separate the secret from your source code. This is useful in the collaborative environment where you may not want to share your database login credential with your people. Instead, you can share the source code with allowing other people to create their own. So here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to install .env module inside this project. So I'm going to open my terminal. Let me just open a new terminal here. And here I'm going to say cd mon app. And I'm going to install npm iphone install. And then I'm going to install .env module. And I'm going to install that as dev dependency. So I'm going to say here npm i dot env hyphen capital D. Now, once I have this module, let me clear the screen, close this terminal, and here I'm going to require the dot env module. So I'm going to say here require, and inside this parenthesis, I'm going to say dot env, and I'm going to call a method of dot env, which is config. And inside this config, you need to specify some argument. So you need to specify the path of your config file. So in the curl braces, I'm going to specify path. So I'm going to call here a key path and then I'm going to specify double quote dot forward slash and then I'm going to specify config dot env. Now this path is refers to the root directory. So when you create this config dot env file, you need to create this file inside your root directory, inside your mon app, instead of creating that inside this server. I'm going to create this file inside this mon app. So I'm going to create here a new file and specify here config.env just like this just out of that here i'm going to specify the port variable like this port is equal to and then i'm going to specify my port value which is 4000 that's it this is going to create a variable port and specify value to it 4000 let me save this file back to the server.js and here let me access that port variable so now if you want to access the value of this config file you need to specify here object process dot env dot and then specify your variable name i have a variable inside that dot env file which is port so i'm going to specify here port just out of that i'm going to specify default value to this port variable default value is 8080 now let me save the changes and open my terminal you can notice my server is running on port 4000 so I hope you understand how to work and store your values inside the .env files. Now, once you create this file, let me create my API route. So in the next lecture, we're going to start creating the API routes.